Welcome to PJ's Worship, a virtual worship experience brought to you by the First Congregational Church of Dudley, Massachusetts, a United Church of Christ church. This week we welcome musical guests David Noggle, Kristen Noley, and our church trio, Bill Pedersen, Chris Robinson, and Sarah White. Welcome to PJ's Worship for this 9th of May, the 6th Sunday of Easter. Please know that I further reflect upon today's theme with you where you are uh, in our weekly newsletter, PJ's Place, sent on just a couple of days ago, the 7th of May, and on PJ's podcast uh, titled, With Me, Where I Am, to be sent through my PJ's Place mailing list on May the 12th. Thank you for joining us. Uh, those who are uh, with me here today in person, it is so good to have you here, so good to have each and every one of you here, and it is so good to have you here who are joining us from where, hey, wherever you are, home, rehabilitation facility, wherever that might be. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about today, actually. That's our whole theme for today, uh, how we might be more with you where you are, wherever that is. For those of us who are uh, joining us on YouTube, uh, do look to the end of this uh, video uh, to learn how to contact me, our church family, uh, through our website, uh, our wider church through their website, and there you'll learn on our website how to give of your time, your talent, and your financial resources. And thanks so much for those who do that. For those who are gathered here, uh, do know there's a basket in the back of the sanctuary. And thank you, each and every one who choose to give in that way. And remember, no matter who you are or where you are, whether you are here with me or here with me, uh, that no matter who you are or where you are along the journey of your life, you are so deeply welcome here. Would you gather with me now in a time of opening prayer? God, thank you. Thank you for thank you for being with me. I speak for myself in that moment and yet I I have a sense I speak for those sitting here with me in this room called Sanctuary and, and those gathering from so many different places, thank you, for, thank you for being with me. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with me where I am. Thank you for being with all of us where we are. What is happening right now, dearest God, this, this opportunity of being in so many different places at once is, is the result of having lived through, still living through this difficult, dark, in many ways dark time, this pandemic time. 
This time of trying to figure it out week, week after week has at the same time presented to us this unprecedented opportunity, this opportunity many of us never even knew to dream about before. This opportunity to be here within these walls and everywhere that everyone else is beyond these walls as well. We're still figuring it out, dearest God, and, and we struggle with feelings of wondering whether, whether we're enough, whether we're doing it well enough this week or in this way, and, and we just keep trying to be more. So be with us as we think of it this week, all of what this entails. Be with us now wherever we are. And in this moment, as together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us away from temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning, children. Good morning, children uh, of a certain age, and good morning, children of a younger age. We are glad to have you all with us today. And oh, by the way, it's Mother's Day. Hi, Mom. It's Mother's Day. I do hope you take a moment to uh, let your mom or whoever is the uh, most special woman in uh, your life to know that you love them and you are grateful for them for being in your life maybe you could draw them a picture maybe you could pick them a flower from outside 
knowest thou flowers are good. However you do it, just let them know. Just let that person know that you love them. Oh, by the way, yes, that'll mean a lot from you. But, uh, you know, I hear, do you hear it? I hear some yo-ho-hoing in the background. So I think yo maybe... Ho, yo yo-ho, pirate's life for me. Come along. Come along. And... <clears throat> yo ho, yo ho, a pirate. Oh, hey there, PJ. Ah, uh, hey, Pirate Jack. Uh, you seem in a good mood today. Oh, yes, indeed, I am. It's Mother's Day, you know. You know, I have a soft spot, me a pirate heart for me, mummy. Yar. Oh, yes. I I'm happy for you, Pirate Jack. And some people don't have that special relationship that you have. I am happy for you. Uh, hey, are you going to do something special for her? Well, are of course. You know how I told you about them pirate cookies she used to make me? Well, I was thinking I might try to make some for her today. Oh, that sounds great. Uh, I know that the fun of pirate cookies is discovering the treasure inside. Uh, do you have something special planned? Well, it's Mother's Day there, PJ. So maybe I'll bake in some roses. That'll be a surprise. Har, 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 har. Mmm, sounds interesting. Uh, any other reason you're in a good mood today? Well, our now that you mention it, our uh -huh. I did hear that that girl Clara came by to talk to you recently when I was out there in the high seas. <laughs> yes, she did. Uh, she was quite impressed by your big adventure, actually. Arr, she was? Oh, yes, she was. Hey, I was too, Pirate Jack. Hey, that was an important adventure. Out there helping people know that those monsters on your old maps aren't real. Arr, people seem to believe anything these days. Yeah, well, you know, there really are some scary things happening in the world. Uh, maybe that's why. Arr, like those rough COVID seas, eh? Oh, well, yes, yes. But uh, even those things are getting so much better, well, at least here in these United States. Uh, other countries are really struggling. Arr, I know. That's very sad. It is, it is. And uh, as Clara was saying, Lord, there really are a lot of scary monsters in the world, Pastor John. Maybe not sea monsters. And like those on those maps you showed me, yet there are monsters, people hurting one another. And so Clara thinks and that's why she has to act so tough all the time and, and talk tough, too. Arr, well, I think she is kind of cute. I like the way she acts and talks. <laughs> it was, she feels the same about you, too. Arr, she does? Did she say that? Well, uh, yes, she does. And, and yes, she did. Arr, well, what did she say exactly? Go ahead, take your time. Tell me clear. Just curious, you know, Arr. <laughs> well, uh, she said, <clears throat> he is so brave. Traveling where people think monsters live. Arr. Then I told her about the 23rd Psalm where it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And, and well, then Clara said, So uh, God is with Pirate Jack, helping him through scary places, past any monsters he might face. And I said, Well, that's right, Clara. And God is with us too when we walk through our scary places. We are never alone, and, and we don't have to seem tough all the time either. God is there with us when we're scared. Arr, good memory there, PJ, and you're a pretty good storyteller, I tell you. Oh, well, yeah, something like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's what we're thinking about today, too, uh, that God is with us where you are. So that's what God wants us to do, too, to be with people where they are.
So are that means God is with me, mummy, where she is. Me mummy who is looking forward to seeing her little pirate Jack later today. <laughs> and God is with your mummy where she is. Oh, our, look, she's right there in our sanctuary. <laughs> and God's with everyone everywhere, wherever they are. Hey, yep, yep. Yeah, hey, um, I'm going to pray now so you can get ready for your visit, okay? Arr, that's a good idea there, PJ. <laughs> oh. Thank you, God. Thank you for good mothers and you and others for, for being with us where we are. Amen. Amen. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Bye-bye, PJ. Bye-bye. <laughs> to God be the glory, great things he has done. So lucky the world that he gave us his son Who yielded his life on torment for sin And opened the life gate that all may go in Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the earth hear his voice Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the people rejoice Oh come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God. The vilest offender to grace may believe That moment from Jesus a pardon receive Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the earth hear his voice Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the people rejoice Oh come to the Father through Jesus the Son And give him the glory Great things he has done He has taught us great things He has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greatest will be our wonder, our victory, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice, O oh, come. To the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Excellent, David. Thank you for that. So, put these on so I can see. Ah, there it is. So for Mother's Day 2021, uh, and, and some of you know, by the way, and, and some of you may not, I, I keep sharing this from time to time, but for decades, I have been a lectionary preacher every week, which is just a fancy word for saying I've been following this three-year series of readings. So, you know, I think it's a good thing so that pastors, priests don't just preach on whatever their favorite verses all the time. But the circumstances of this past year have caused me more often than not to be off lectionary when there are particular themes I feel really need addressing in the moment. So this was another one of those weeks. Um, and for Mother's Day 2021, here are seven verses. I, I rarely do this sort of thing, but here are seven verses uh, carefully chosen, speaking of caring, comforting, maternal aspects of our God 
who is always seeking to be with you where you are. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 13, and all of these passages, by the way, being read from the New Revised Standard, Standard, Standard Version. From Isaiah 66, 13, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. In other words, to the people at the time where you are. Genesis 17, verse 1. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Or, as it says in Hebrew, El Shaddai. I'll talk more about that in a little while. Walk before me and be blameless. From Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 18. You were unmindful. Imagine a mother saying that. You, you were unmindful of the rock that bore you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. From Psalm 22.9, Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. From Psalm 94, verse 19, When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. From Deuteronomy 32, verses 11 and 12. As an eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, as it spreads its wings, takes them up and bears them aloft on its pinions, the Lord alone guided him no foreign God was with him. And finally, Isaiah 26, 3. Those of steadfast mind you keep in peace, in peace because they trust in you. Well, bless God the reading and hearing of these words. Help us know you like a loving mother, always seeking to love and to be with us where we are, encouraging us to love and be with all people where they are. Amen. Amen. Well, so good to be with you today, wherever you are. So good to be with you wherever you are. It's always interesting. Some always choose to sit on this side. Some choose to sit on this side. I was, uh, yeah, I mean, I was definitely that kid. Like when, when I walked into a classroom for the first time, the first day it was tough. You know, where do I sit? But then we're like, that's where I sit. So anyway, I noticed at least one person is adventurous today sitting a little different than where he usually sits. What's the weather like on this side, Rick? <laughs> so, anyway, good to be with you where you are, wherever that is. 19th century British novelist William Makepeace Thackeray once said, Mother is the name for God in the lips and hearts of little children. And I love that. Mother is the name for God in the lips and hearts of little children. God, Father, and Mother is with you where you are. With you where you are. 
Isaiah 66, verse 3, which I just read, is a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. As Israelites return home from Babylonian exile, God says, uh, God is quoted here as saying, those at that time believed, God was saying, I will be with you where you are. So those who were in Jerusalem uh, thought they were speaking specifically to them. Of course, God was with others in other places, right? It doesn't say that in the Bible, but you know that's true, I hope. But God is saying, I am with you where you are. Certainly fathers, by the way, can provide comfort too. And children need tender, tender love shown to them by fathers just as much as mothers. Yet as I am reminded by my one-year-old grandson, by Oliver, uh, there are times when even if a loving father and uh, a loving mother are both present, or a loving grandfather and a loving grandmother, uh, when tears start to come, now maybe not always, but uh, children often run first to their mother or their grandmother, holding back tears until just that moment when they are in those arms. And that's fine. I believe God says, however you need me, wherever you are at, that is where I'll be. It's like those words I say each week at the beginning of worship, words of the wider United Church of Christ, to which we are gratefully a part, no matter who you are or where you are along life's journey, you are welcome here. And by the way, some of you may not have heard me say this already, but um, Tuesday, May 18th from 3.30 to 4.30 in the afternoon, and I, I know that's not a good time for everybody, but there's this Tuesdays for Nurture series uh, on YouTube, and I learned yesterday that uh, upwards of like 20,000 people may tune in. Yeah, I, they, could, they could have told me that afterwards, but, uh, but uh, our church will be represented on May 18th. Uh, as one of those churches, uh, one of those purple churches uh, to be highlighted uh, because of great good that comes from our church family here. So on PJ's Place, which I sent out the other day, you'll see information there on how to sign up for that. And should you miss it, want to see it later, it'll be posted to YouTube for uh, all time after that. So, of course, in this verse from Isaiah, by the way, God is promising comfort to children of God who have come to think of themselves as grown-ups, right? No longer that, that one-year-old running into a parent's arms. They think of themselves as grown-ups, right? Those I'm standing in front of here now, uh, I'm guessing most of, most of you think of yourselves as grown-ups. And the truth is, comforting grown-ups can be way more difficult than comforting children of God who are very young. Now, not all, not all, sadly not all, yet many childhood hurts can come and go quickly. Often a hug or a few tender words can bring speedy healing. Yet the pains of adulthood, the pain of loss, the pain of worry, the pain of illness, the pain of rejection and betrayal, the pain of having let yourself and others down, and so much more, those are another matter. Grown-ups can also find themselves yearning for the sort of comfort that they may have received from a mother or some other caring woman long ago. So as any good mother knows, comforting a child doesn't end when they go off to high school or to college or, uh, oh, sorry, there's just a couple here that I know well. 
when they go off to high school or college, or even when they marry and have children of their own. So mom keeps trying to be with you where you are, because that's what she does. In Genesis 17.1, God tells Abram and Sarah that they're going to have a son. The Hebrew word for God Almighty in this verse is El Shaddai. The El part of the name is the shortened form of shortened form of Elohim, meaning God. But Shaddai is possibly derived from the Hebrew word Shad, which is used in Scripture for a woman's breast. You learned something new today. Shad. Where children are cuddled and nursed, and so this name may also be a nod to the maternal side of God's nature, meeting us at whatever age where we are. In Deuteronomy 32, 18, Moses chides the disobedient Israelites saying, you were unmindful of the rock that bore you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. So moms can't just be comforting, right? A steady dose of comfort with no challenge wouldn't ever have us formed into everything God created us to be. So mom also, uh, moms also need to be challenging, just as the maternal side of God is challenging, just as we are called to offer both comfort and challenge to one another, meeting each other, being with each other where we are. Psalm 94, 19 says, when the cares of my heart are many, or as it says in the contemporary English Bible, when my anxieties multiply, your comforting calms me down. I, I have my own struggles with anxiety from time to time. I need that comforting. I bet many of you do too. Even though Psalm 94 bemoans the injustices of life and the ways that those who seek to do evil seem so arrogant, like they just know they'll get away with it, right? You know folks like that. I do too. The psalmist knows God, their heavenly parent, will not allow this to continue forever. Psalm 94, 16, 18 says, who rises up for me against the wicked? Who stands up for me against evildoers? If the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have lived in the land of silence. When I thought my foot is slipping, your steadfast love, O oh Lord, held me up. In a PJ paraphrase, this is essentially saying, Who's got your back, kid? I do. I'm with you right where you are. Now, what comforts you? What comforts you? And what comforts me may not be exactly the same. I had a conversation with somebody just the other day about the difference between being an introvert and an extrovert. And as shocking as it is to so many folks when I tell them I really am an introvert, <laughs> And, uh, and all that means is, is, that being, is that I can do this. I can be with big crowds and all, but then I need to run to the woods or, or sit with my fish in the basement for a while because that's how I recharge. Others recharge by being in big groups. So what comforts you and comforts me may not be exactly the same. So again, we need to be met where we are. There are people in my life who I love with all my heart and soul. And at times when they are hurting, they need a hug, right? You know people like that. They need a hug. There are others in my life who I also love with all my heart and soul who occasionally try to bite my head off if I try to give them a hug too quickly without giving some space first. God, like a loving parent, is with you where you are. Well, now I want to share with you 
I want to share with you a little bit about our actual personal experience here a little bit. For well over a year now, a group of us here at the First Congregational Church of Dudley, United Church of Christ, and you may not know this. this, this really came to my attention this past week. You may not know this. You may not fully understand this. Even after I share this, you won't fully understand it. But I want you to know a group of us has been working week after week to be with you during this pandemic where you are. Where whether you are at home or at different times gathering with us in person. Along the way, we came to realize that despite the deep grief and the deep struggle of this time, God is also providing us an unprecedented opportunity to more fully become everything God has created us to be. So that worship from this building, right? I'm within four walls now. God within, the, so that worship within this building, from this building, can be with you where you are. Whether or not you're here with me in this room or wherever you are. It's wonderful, by the way. Wonderful. So good. I love it when this sanctuary is packed. Now, not this moment, because we couldn't allow that, but you get what I mean. It's wonderful when we can be physically together in this sanctuary, yet it's also wonderful when what is happening in this sanctuary can come to you, who are equally important, not more, not less, than everyone sitting here with me now. It's wonderful that we can be with you, Norma, give a smile to Norma, and others in your home. Beloved member of our church family who may or may not be able to ever be with us again in person. It is wonderful that we can be with you, Ken, and others. When your work schedule interferes with your being able to be here at 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning so that we can be with you where you are. It means so much, Amy, who's giggling right now, I just know it. It means so much that we can be with you, Amy, who has spent more than a year in and out of hospitals and rehabilitation facilities, that when you or anyone else is in that situation, that now we can be with you where you are. Amy also joins us every single week on coffee hour. It's just awesome. How great that you, Dan. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Dan, who grew up, by the way, within our church family in the 1960s. Not all of you know Dan. I met him a few years ago here for the first time. He comes up here during the summertime, lays flowers at his mom's grave. Dan grew up to, uh, to be a Marine. Uh, he's now retired, I think mostly. Uh, lives in Al Alexandria. Of Virginia, part of, part of what's called the Belvoir Chapel there. And he shares everything from here with other members of Belvoir Chapel as well. How great, Dan, who grew up within our church family, that you can now have us be your other church home too, that the church home that you grew up in is still your church home and that you can participate here and at coffee hour. And by the way, on adult study every Tuesday night as well from where you live in Virginia, that, that we can be with you and others you're introducing us to from where you are. Some of you may have heard me say at the beginning of worship today that Gordon, a member of our church family, his sister, Emma Ann, 
now part of our church family, extended church family, whether or not we ever meet her in Pennsylvania. Oh, and Clara and other Sunday school children. Well, how super duper awesome. How super duper awesome that you can join us from worship from where you are, that, you, that we can be with you where you are, when you have no other way of being here physically in this room with us. And Alec, Alec, just over the line there in Southbridge, when you discovered us through our website and YouTube and wondered whether or not you would be welcomed here, well, how our hearts sang to welcome you where you are, both where you first discovered us and here in this sanctuary when that's possible for you. To my own mother, Anne, putting her on the spot again right now. My own mother, Anne, in our sanctuary now, yet usually at Lemonster Crossing Assisted Living Community, where she and approximately 30 others gather weekly with us for worship. How glad we are to be with you where you are where you are and how we hope for this opportunity to develop in other places. And I have been offering it, by the way, offering it at Christopher Heights, offering it at, uh, offering it at the Overlook. And, and, um, and there's a little bit that needs to happen on the other end in some of these places. And by the way, to the unknown stranger, who through technology, we can also now be with where you are, even if we never learn your name, even if you never send us any money, may you know in your heart how glad we are to be with you where you are. And finally, to you gathering with me in this physical space called sanctuary, seated between these walls, seated between these walls, joining with me in such wonderful memories. I can remember times where Oh, I can remember times for events, even for those gathered here. I'm not going to call them out now. I want to protect your privacy. But I can remember times where I was inviting people to sit up here because we had no more room up there or up there or anywhere else. And how wonderful those times. So good to have you with us here now with us. You know, we keep figuring it out. It's exhausting work. For some of us, this has been some of the most challenging yet rewarding work of our lives. And yes, hear me say it loud and clear. These changes are here to stay. Yet we'll keep improving. For example, this camera plunked in the middle of the floor at the front of our sanctuary. If you don't like that, I don't like it either. We're working on that. I should have told you that before now. Right, We're looking to find another wonderful camera. We're hoping to broadcast from our balcony. Will it work exactly like that? I don't know, because almost every single week we keep figuring out something we didn't know last week. And there's just so much else, so very much else, which continues to happen week after week because this opportunity to learn how to truly be church. You know, we had, we had a gentleman who for a long time was in prison. We could... We could join with that person in prison now doing this, what we're doing. How to truly be church, meeting you not only physically here, yet literally wherever you are. It's perhaps a once in a generation opportunity when we simply need to embrace to be who we are created to be. That's what family does. That's what family does, becomes better and more, as best it can, when it can. Well, as many within our church family and I do, everything we can to welcome you, to love you, to have you know how important you are, to be with you where you are. So it often is with our earthly mothers, so it always is with our God. The following titled Open Letters, Open Letter to Pastors about Mother's Day was written by Amy Young in 2014. Last Mother's Day, I simply read it from my desk because we were figuring it out. We've come a long way. Well, this year I've turned this into our responsive prayer for today. 
I'm going to bow my head for the first portion, and then I'm going to look up for the second. I'll say the words and then ask you to repeat with me. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. We celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. We mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. We mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. We walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. We need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. We celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. We sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. We grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. We acknowledge your experience. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. We are better for having you in our midst. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. We mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who step-parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. We walk with you along these complex paths. To those who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. We grieve with you. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. We grieve and rejoice with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness. We commend you for your selflessness. And remember how you hold that child in your heart. And remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. We anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. We walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors in our midst. We remember you. We remember you. Amen.
There we go. It is so good. It really is so good to be with you. It's so good to be with you. Some of you, uh, some of you gathered here in the sanctuary with me. I, I haven't seen in quite a while until uh, until this day. Uh, others I've seen a little bit. It's good to it's good to see you. It's good to be with you. And you, it's good to be with you. Good to be with you. Some of you I'll be joining in a little while on um, on coffee hour. And, you know, even thinking about that, I mean, eventually, you know, we're going to be having coffee hour again down in Jacobs Hall. But uh, we're having really active discussions right now about, you know, like Dan wants to still keep coming with us to coffee hour. And, and Amy, you know, God willing, Amy will be able to be back here. But who knows, Amy? We don't know, right? So, uh, and Amy and whoever who can't be with us. We're trying to figure out a way to have those folks also join us down in coffee hour. So we're figuring it out. And it is going to be, we are going to be, we are now better and more. Be with me in this time of closing prayer, if you would. Oh, God. It means so much to have you welcome us and be with us where we are. Sometimes, God, where we are is a difficult place to be. A place we don't even want to be ourselves. And so to have you meet us there Wow, that means a lot. Forgive us the places we sometimes are, places we know we really ought not to be, and yet your comfort even there, well, there are no words to fully express our gratitude. Thanks also for challenging us to move past these places. Jesus, who did whatever you could to meet others where they were, keep encouraging us through Holy Spirit to be with others through you in your name where they are, near and far, in sanctuary, home, rehabilitation, hospital, prison, and more. Thank you. Thank you for truly loving us by finding a way to be with us where we are. Amen. Somehow feels particularly meaningful to me today. God bless you. I, I pray it's been meaningful for you. God bless you. God, keep you and your family safe. God, give to you and to your family peace and hope. God, center you and your family in the strength and in the power of love. Amen.